Have you ever thought about what type of mindset you have? Dr. Carol Dweck introduces the idea of there being two different types of mindsets in her book. Through countless examples, Dr. Dweck explains the psychology of the mind through the lens of both a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. The difference between the two can simply be defined by a person's point of view on individual successes and failures. Fixed mindset individuals believe that a person's intelligence, talents, and skills are primarily naturally occurring and God-given. This leads many fixed mindset individuals to have a disconnect between their efforts and results. They credit their successes to natural ability and fa failures to that layer of. When a fixed mindset individual does fail, they see that failure as a direct reflection of their character and competence. Many times, the slightest degree of failure can deter an individual from being interested or putting forth all their effort into the class or activity. Because their reactions to adversity and failure are typically impulsive and lead to disengagement from the activity, many fixed mindset individuals fail to reach their full potential because they shut down and stop committing themselves to improving in that area. When a fixed mindset individual does commit to improving, they do so with the belief that they will never be as good or successful as someone who is naturally talented at that skill. Having a growth mindset means that you believe in ability such as athleticism or mathematics skills can be improved through hard work and persistence. When presented with a challenge, those with a growth mindset usually rise to that challenge. In addition, with a growth mindset, you typically do not fear failure. Rather, you view it as a chance to improve yourself. Whenever you are set back, you find it motivating and take it as a wake-up call, rather than sitting back and feeling sorry for yourself or blaming others. Those with a growth mindset have a love for learning and a resilience that is essential for success. Qualities are seen as things that are developed through dedication and effort. It is great to be extremely smart and talented, but that is only a starting block. If you have a growth mindset, you realize that nobody has accomplished great things without years of learning and practice. Let's use Mia Hamm as an example. Do you think she made it to the level she is at today by just talent alone? Of course, part of her success is due to the fact that she is a very talented athlete, but she had to work very hard to get to where she is today. She was not just handed a spot on the national team. In fact, Mia Hamm stated that the most important characteristic to have as an athlete and as a person is mental toughness. Developing or having a growth mindset is crucial for various aspects of life, such as education, business, sports, and relationships. What would you re do if you received a bad grade in a test? Would you say, whatever, this teacher hates me? Or would you think to yourself, I obviously need to figure out a better way to study because I definitely was not prepared? Now think about your boss. You're not always going to see eye to eye, right? Well, are you going to use your boss's criticism as a learning experience, or are you just going to give up and quit your job? Don't want to write from your problems. Face them. Moreover, there are individuals out there who are scared of getting close to people because of bad relationships in the past. Rather than dwelling on the past, they need to focus on the future and start fresh. Praise was a large concept talked about in the book in relation to fixed and growth mindsets and motivating students to learn. As we have learned in 21st century classrooms, there are many positives and negatives to praising students for their work or ability and the rewards or incentives teachers provide for doing well. The book my, Mindset suggests that there are two different types of praises and we must be conscious of the times which we offer praise and the type of praise we give. Parents, teachers, coaches, and students should be aware that too much praise or not the right kind of praise can lead to dependent individuals. We should keep away from praise that judges intelligence or talent or praise that implies that we are proud of a student or athlete for their intelligence or talent. Instead, we need to focus on praising students for the work they put in or effort and processes that it took to achieve a certain goal. Many students are dependent on receiving praise that is directed in their intelligence and not at the process of learning they took to succeed. When this happens, students develop a fixed mindset, and when they fail at something, they start to believe that it has something to do with them just being incapable of succeeding at that particular task. Dweck mentioned, praising children's intelligence harms their motivation and it harms their performance. So then how do we as teachers develop growth-minded students and provide them with the correct kind of praise? The kind of praise that values skills and achievements. 
The answer is a two-part plan, one for teachers and one for parents. Motivating the unmotivated can be a difficult task. However, a solid foundation with parent-teacher relationship can be a great starting point for helping students succeed in the classroom. It is imperative that parents and teachers be on the same page when working with the student, and it helps if both mentors have the same mindset for helping the student succeed. When parents and teachers change to a growth mindset, students will begin to recognize the difference in praise and rewards. Then maybe students will also be transformed into the growth mindset and become motivated by the sole purpose of learning instead of being motivated by rewards and incentives. Learn to hear your fixed mindset. When approaching a challenge, listen to what is going through your mind. You question yourself if you can do it. You think to yourself, are you talented enough? Will people laugh at you? But you remind yourself to keep your dignity and not even try it. When you hit a setback, not everyone knows that you don't, that you don't have the talent to succeed. If you fail, you think you will be a failure. You could have succeeded if you were talented enough, but you make an excuse for it every time. When you face criticism, the fixed mindset will say, it's not my fault, it is someone else's fault. You could develop anger towards the one criticizing you, thinking things like, what makes them think they can tell me this? It is possible the person could be giving positive, constructive feedback, but with your mindset, all you hear are the negative points. You have a choice, though. However you choose to approach challenges, setbacks, and criticism is your decision. Thinking of them in a fixed mindset will bring forth your limited or lacking abilities. With a growth mindset, you would think of them of ways to improve or step your game up, how to go into more depth, or to expand and grow. Changing your mindset requires willpower. Take on a challenge wholeheartedly. Learn from your setbacks, take in criticism, and take action knowing that it is in your own hands now. You must approach success in a different way and make the effort to improve. If you know you have a fixed mindset on something when you shouldn't, ignore your initial thoughts. Take a step back and think of the situation and identify ways you can improve and you will be on your way to developing a growth mindset. There are many connections throughout the book to mindsets in relation to education. First, though, teachers need to evaluate themselves and develop a growth mindset on their own if they do not already have one. A teacher's growth mindset not only benefits them personally, but it also helps their students. Part of having a growth mindset as a teacher is believing that all students have the ability to succeed. Teachers should recognize that all students have potential to grow and learn new things. If the teacher believes in the student, then the student will start to believe in himself. This goes along with building a strong connection with each student. As we have discussed in class, teacher-student relationships are important. We should set high standards and expectations for all students, even the low-performing, and balance that out by creating a nurturing classroom atmosphere. Teachers need to provide students with the means to reach their high standards. In return, most, most if not all students will meet those standards and expectations. Teachers are the role models of growth mindset. When the teacher believes the students can grow, then the student will realize that as well. As mentioned earlier, part of the developing a growth mindset in students is by praising processes over product. The key is not to make students dependent on praise, but to make them feel confident in skills and give them intrinsic motivation to succeed. Provide students with constructive criticism and give feedback that helps them improve their skills and reach their full potential. Most of all, most of all students and parents should know that it a teacher will not fail them. They should also know that a teacher will do everything in their power to help, th help them succeed, and that is the key element to helping students develop a growth mindset in an academic setting and in life. All in all, sometimes we do not want to change ourselves very much. As stated in Mindset, if you're strong and have willpower, you can do it. But if you're weak and don't have willpower, you can't. In other words, if you have a fixed mindset, do your best to make a change. You can and will succeed if you're motivated, strong, and willing to work hard. The passion for stretching yourself and sticking to it, even when it's not going well, is the hallmark of the growth mindset. This is the mindset that allows individuals to thrive during the most challenging times in their lives, as stated in Mindset. We want to leave you with these questions in mind. What mindset do you have? Do you think you have the willpower and the work ethic to change your mindset if you needed to? Also, do you think you have the ability to change others' mindsets?